when you show up in the Coliseum and the crowd gets behind you clapping, they want to see more of... Hey there, it's Sunday morning and I just put out the video on doing the back splash, back splash in my kitchen, which I actually started this time last year. And uh, <laughs> spent several days working on it <laughs> before stopping and saying, well, okay, I got to do something else because obviously I'm not going to get this done too quickly. And then I, you know, just lost track of time, maybe one excuse after the other not to finish it and left it until this time this year. So I just finished it, but it's not really finished, finished. There's still a section above the window that doesn't have any tiles and I have to cut those. But now that I've you know, thought of a better method, I'm thinking I should go ahead and do the other wall too. Uh, I just need quarter inch plywood by a sheet of that. I really love it and, I, and it's been a year and I haven't gotten sick of it. So that's a really good sign. I get sick of things pretty easily. So yeah, I still like it. Anyway, so that's done. The video is up. If you haven't seen it, there'll be a link to it at the in the end card at the end of this video. You can go and watch it there on my main channel. This is my scrap in channel where I talk. And uh, I should talk about my jeans that I'm wearing. These are the jeans I've been wearing for the past two years, I guess. Because basically I really only wear these jeans when I'm out here doing something in my shop where the camera's rolling. Otherwise I'm wearing, you know, track pants that are all covered with paint and stuff like that, you know, real sloppy looking. I want to be a little bit more dressed up, a little bit more presentable on camera, so I wear these jeans. But the thing that's been happening with the jeans that I've buy, been buying over the past, say, I don't know, 15, 20 years even, is the, the, they've been splitting on the seams, right beside the seams, usually, usually right beside the pocket on the back or right in the middle on the back. And that's what happened to these. And it's not because I'm, you know, fat, I got a big fat ass. That's not it. My, my ass is basically non-existent. Like there's no ass there at all. So that's not it. It's, I don't know what it is. I think it's, there's a weakness there that's kind of built into the jeans the way they put them together these days. Anyway, so I fixed it. And <laughs> the way I fixed it was I got another pair of jeans that had basically the same problem. And I cut a patch out of that and I glued it on with polyurethane construction adhesive. You see, polyurethane construction adhesive solves everything. It's good for everything. You really need to have that. And I know there's a lot of the woodworkers that that would be the last thing they would buy. Especially if they see that I'm using it. Uh, if I'm using it, it can't be any good. Anyway, so jeans fixed, feeling good. Actually feeling a little bit better back there because it's, you know, that little bit of padding. I don't know, it kind of, kind of feels good. Working in the basement, trying to get that done. You can see plywood in the background over there. That's Baltic birch plywood. I bought 10, was it 10 sheets? Yeah, 10 sheets of half inch five by five and five sheets of three quarter inch five by five real Baltic birch plywood because it's actually cheaper. The half inch is actually cheaper than the plywood I was buying to do the work I was doing in the basement. So I've been making diffusers for the back wall of my listening room downstairs. I just got two more to do and that'll be done. The, the room will be, be done other than the floor. I got cheap, thin carpet tile for the floor for now. And when I say for now, it'll probably be like the backsplash, <laughs> maybe a year later, two years later, three years later, whatever, you know, just to make it look more finished down there. That video that I posted this morning, I did the voiceover in the basement, right? With the, with the good microphone on a microphone stand, standing up, doing the voiceover. But the big difference is I edited the video first, like rough edit, put it on a thumb drive, brought it down, put it on the computer in the basement, and then I could, I could go through the video, just, you know, without sound, and watch the scenes, rather than trying to take notes, 
and record the voiceover right there. And wow, was that good. Oh, that was, that was so good, right? It took no time, basically. Well, it took about the half an hour to record the voiceover. And in about, I don't know, 40 minutes to edit it. Because you, you say things over and over again, right? Um, which I tend not to do when I'm, <laughs> when I'm doing these videos. I don't make very many mistakes. I guess that, you, I don't know, it's got to do with relaxation, comfort. You know, you feel more uh, pressured when you're doing something like that to get it right. Because, you know, if you don't get it right, you're going to have to repeat it. And then you're going to have to repeat it again and repeat it again. So, yeah, that's a, that's a step up down there to get that done. Making use of the room other than for what I've been using it for. Every night I'm down there. I watch a show or a movie, and then I listen to music maybe until 1 o'clock, 1 2 o'clock in the morning. It's awesome. It's awesome. Anyway, so uh, what else can I talk about? Oh yeah, I got white oak right here. Uh, I went and I bought some more. They didn't have a lot in stock, but I, bought, I needed some thicker stuff. I'm going to make two chairs for that room downstairs. And you can see what they're going to look like here. It's going to be a modern look. Uh, the cushions will be foam, of course, about four inches thick. It depends upon, like, I got to go get the price from the upholsterer to have it done. And I'll see what kind of material he's going to use. Or, like, I'd really like to have leather, but that might be too expensive. We'll see. But that should be an interesting project. I'm going to make two of them. I'm going to film it all of course and I'll put that video on my main channel and watch it flop <laughs> speaking of flops uh, uh, Veritasium made a video I never saw it but a lot of people you know been talking about it and I actually had a couple people email me the uh, link to the video saying oh, look at the revelation it's a real it's a real you know Wow, how, how did nobody ever see this before? That clickbait works. This is no mystery. This is not news, okay? Clickbait, yes, of course it works. All right? You don't need a, a video from Veritasium to see that. If you do, you, you haven't been paying attention, okay? Clickbait, of course it works. It makes people click on the video. And you need people to click on the video to watch the video. Otherwise, it doesn't get enough views. And the more people that click on the video, the more YouTube promotes the video. Your channel lives and dies on the homepage. It lives and dies on the homepage. If your videos are not showing up on the homepage, your channel is not getting any views. Your videos are not getting any views. It's as simple as that. You gotta look at the homepage. Okay, you gotta look at us like gladiators. Okay, and the homepage is actually the Coliseum. And the place where the gladiators usually exist is out in these little towns and places where they, you know, they're all fighting in the mud. They're certainly not in the Coliseum. When you show up in the Coliseum and the crowd gets behind you clapping, they wanna see more of this gladiator that's, you know, doing so well. You're staying in the Colosseum for a while. As long as you keep doing well, you're staying in the Colosseum. Uh, when, when you fall down, okay, or get killed, <laughs> they, they, they boot you out of the Colosseum. So that's the homepage. That's the homepage, the Colosseum. This is where the gladiator needs to be to perform at his best. And if you're not showing up there because your videos are being ignored by your subscribers, regardless of how many you have, or, you know, just not being promoted by YouTube, then your, your videos are not going to do well. I was finished and I shut off the camera, but I was thinking about what I said there about clickbait working. And then I'll have people saying, people that watch that video probably, that saying that, you know, there are different kinds of clickbait. Okay, there are different kinds of clickbait. There's the honest clickbait and there's the deceptive clickbait. Yes, the honest clickbait is the most effective if your video has the substance to back it up. Of course, 
right? If you say that uh, this is amazing, colossal, stupendous, you haven't seen this before, and you know most of the people that click on the video are actually amazed <laughs> and they haven't seen it before, then that's honest clickbait, okay? You're not misleading anybody. But the other one where, you know, you got the scantily clad female on the thing and she doesn't even show up in the video. And you got the guys frantically searching through the video looking for that scantily clad female. That's deceptive. All right? They're both effective to a certain degree. But the better one is the honest one where you actually are, you know, hyping up something that's worthy of hype. Right? People should watch. So yes, there's a distinction, but it's still clickbait. You really think that people are going to be seduced by that? I think he knows what Rome is. Rome is the mob. You conjure magic for them and they'll be distracted. You take away their freedom and still they'll roar. The beating heart of Rome is not the marble of the Senate. It's the sand of the Colosseum.